Sailors often had enough to worry about, raging storms, attacks, and the hot sun. But food is not often considered in the equation. On the open ocean, it was hard to keep things fresh, especially food. Meats were preserved using salt, but fruits and vegetables don't work like that. So when they had them, they had to eat them fast. But if you were on a voyage for a long period of time, you were in trouble. But what happened when sailors didn't have access to fruits and vegetables for a long time? Scurvy. Today, we'll be discussing what was scurvy and how did sailors prevent it. Scurvy is not as common today, but back then it was quite dangerous. The first accounts of scurvy date back to around 3800 or 3600 BCE in the skeletal remains of a child in Egypt. Hippocrates also mentioned the disease in the 5th century. There are also tales of Columbus's men dying of scurvy, being put on tropical islands only to be found months later alive and healthy. It is known that Magellan's crew suffered from the horrible disease as well. But scurvy was not only rampant in sailors. Peasants in the winter were also at risk of getting scurvy. The cold killed most of the crops, and once the fruits and vegetables ran out, it was hard to find a good source of vitamin C. The cause of scurvy was unknown back then. Many didn't link it to vitamins. They didn't even know what those were. Sailors mainly ate biscuits and salted meats on their long journeys because these lasted for long periods of time. But they didn't have a source of vitamin C. As I mentioned earlier, it simply wasn't possible to preserve fruits and vegetables on long voyages. The only preservation techniques were salting, but that only applied to meats. But what causes scurvy? Scurvy is caused by the lack of vitamin C. Vitamin C is used to make cartilage, blood vessels, bone collagen, and more. This explains some of the symptoms. Sailors who didn't have access to the vital nutrients started showing symptoms after about a month. It usually began with an extreme feeling of lethargy, followed by swelling in the joints, bleeding in the gums that usually cause teeth to fall out, and easily bruised skin. The lack of collagen means that tissues could not effectively be replaced, meaning that the tissue will break down easily. Gums would open and become swollen and bloody, and teeth would soon fall out. Sores would form on the legs and break open, pouring out black-colored blood. It also affected internal organs as well. Eventually, if left untreated, they would die because of either heart failure or an infection. One account from an unknown soldier really sums up the horror of the disease. It rotted all my gums, which gave out a black and putrid blood. My thighs and lower legs were black and gangrenous and I was forced to use my knife each day to cut into the flesh in order to release this black and flower blood. I also used my knife on my gums, which were livid and growing all over my teeth. When I had cut away this dead flesh and caused my black blood to flow, I rinsed my mouth and teeth with my urine, rubbing them very hard, and the unfortunate thing was that I could not eat, desiring more to swallow than to chew. Many of our people died of it every day, and we saw bodies thrown into the sea constantly, three or four at a time. No one knew what could be causing the disease, but in 1636, John Woodall published a paper describing the restorative effects of fresh fruit and vegetables. Also, in 1536, a French explorer noticed that his men were getting scurvy, and the natives in the area helped them out to get better. They taught him how to make a certain type of tea from a pine needle. Of course, those vitamins contain vital vitamin C. Then, in 1753, James Lynn showed that the lemon and orange juice could prevent and cure scurvy. James was a surgeon's mate and witnessed the effects of scurvy. He conducted an experiment where he split men into groups and gave them a different cure. The men who were given the lime juice recovered and fared much better than everyone else. In 1795, Gilbert Blaine persuaded the Royal Navy to give the soldiers a form of lemon juice. This helped immensely. This decision changed the course of history as well because the discovery allowed the British Navy to stay out of the blockade in the coast of Europe during the Napoleonic Wars, often for months and months at a time. This would not have been possible without Blaine's request. Cures kept appearing, but they kept being forgotten long, not long after they arrived. It was not until 1933 that Norman Hallworth stated that vitamin C was in fact necessary for humans to live. It's said that scurvy killed more sailors than combat did even though we know now that we have fresh fruits and vegetables. It's still possible to get scurvy, especially since now we aren't consciously considering what we put in our bodies. Because, as the sailors might say, a lime a day keeps the scurvy away. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe.